What's up everybody? I just want to take a moment to be grateful for the life I have. Because if it weren't for my dad, uh, I wouldn't have gotten to lifting, wouldn't have become the world's strongest man, and I'll live the freaking amazing life I live now. He got me off the couch, off of playing video games, and into uh, doing some serious work. Hey Martinez, did you hear about that 16 year old kid winning $3 million this playing Fortnite? Wait, wait, what'd you say again? Yeah, he's 16, 16 year years old. Kid? Won $3 million playing Fortnite. Hey everybody, if you guys don't remember, this right here is Tom DeLong, legendary coach in biomechanics. He's going to be helping me with my front squats and deadlifts today, so we're going to have uh, some fine tuning, so pay attention because you might learn some awesome tidbits here and there. What are you doing right now? Well, I'm clearly too tight, so you know the bar is just hovering above my collarbone. With some weight it presses down, but ideally I'd like to be able to rest the bar back on my collarbone without that additional pressure. Try moving your hands out a little bit. Not that, you know, not, we just have to optimize that hand spacing. That actually hey. works a lot better. Yeah, because if it's too close, you're going to pull your shoulder blades forward. He wants it laying right across his uh, front deltoids and keeping his elbows up. But right now, it's just too light. Yeah, right, once, weight it does sit Yeah, down once you get the weight on there, it'll, it'll, it'll push down a little bit. Yeah, we can also see, once it's laying back here toward his, uh, toward his neck, we want that line of force to try to go right between his hip and his knee. Because this is more, his trunk is more upright. He's going to work a lot more erectors. And it's a very quad dominant movement. Quad and, um, and, and glutes. The hamstring are more of a stabilizer here. But we'll see that, we'll see that more as he goes up in weight. But it's really good, you know, even through, even with, in the um, just the warm ups, his back is erect. It should be. And as he, he as he gets more weight on there, as he comes out of the bottom, his glutes will shift backwards and he'll scoop forward because he wants to utilize both posterior and anterior chain. And we'll see a lot with uh, a, a lot of people that front squat. A lot of times when they're here and they come up out of the bottom. They have a tendency, if, if their glutes shift backwards too much, they have a tendency to drop their elbows and they lean forward mm. and they can dump the bar. So yeah. that's why you gotta keep the, those elbows up. But once again, once he gets more weight on there, it'll, it'll improve a lot. We'll see, it's been a while since I've done yeah. front squats, so well, be good little tune-up session. Yes, it will. Why are you doing front squats now? Because uh, I need to start shifting more towards uh, deadlifting to get ready for Arnold's Barcelona. Because it's gonna be about an 805 pound deadlift for reps. And uh, I figure front squats, if I don't kill them, are a good way to warm up for my deadlifts and still keep my legs active and strong while I focus on deadlifting. Typically, if I'm focusing on squats, my accessory is Romanian deadlift. If I'm focusing on deadlift, my accessory is front squats. So now you can see it's laying down, laying across the front of it front of his delta like his elbows are up he's starting to loosen up a little bit time to speak louder all right he said he's laying he's laying across his front delts now so his shoulder mobility is much better and since with more weight on there it's going to lay across the front delts as it comes down to his knees are tracking with the where his, his toes are pointing his feet are flat on the ground he's not on the balls of his feet you can see that the trunk is upright and his elbows are upright as he comes down and up. The case is he doesn't want his elbows dropping too far down when he comes up out of the bottom. And you'll see that as he gets progressively uh, heavier with that weight. And we don't want his back rounding as either. We want this trunk to be, as stiff, toy. To be as stiff as possible. Toy like, like a toy guy. Tight like a toy guy. Yeah, and you want, and even powerlifters will do a lot of try to do a lot of front squats and high bar squats because it keeps their trunk upright and it really develops these erector muscles. And that's what they want because it keeps you in that tight position and it will also transfer to the deadlift as well. Beautiful. Go a little lower. There you go. Nice. Watch your knees out, Lindsay. Knees out. There you go. Beautiful. 
Um, a lot of people that have this type of body type. So if you look at it with a short trunk, long legs, and they're doing a high bar squat, or, you know, and they, as they want to keep their trunk up, they pull their elbows forward a little bit. But the, the, the key is, is to keep, as you come down, you want the elbows, you want the upper arm, the upper arm and the forearm parallel with the trunk. If they're pulled too far forward, if you come down below parallel, your elbow is going to hit your leg. Like if you're in a powerlifting competition, if that happens, it's a no lift. But we want to keep, we just want to keep it out of the way, but we want to stabilize the bar. If your elbows are too far back here, if you're looking from the side, a lot of people that come down, uh, as they come down toward the bottom, their elbows are behind them. Go ahead and squat down. If you look at this, their elbows are back here. And as they come up, they have a tendency to pull, pull their elbows up and they lean forward. If you keep them under here, it's going to pull the trunk up. The knees will shift forward a little bit. And it'll, it'll if there's balance on the whole foot and their, and their, foot, uh, their foot stance is optimized, they'll have the right angle of the trunk and the, the lower leg and everything and you don't want your elbows hitting your thighs. So once again, you gotta experiment with what's best for the lifter, depending on segment length, joint architecture, and range of motion. Tight back, elbows up. Nice, beautiful. There you go. Try to keep focus straight ahead. Drive up, there you go. Don't scoop through too much. As you get to the top, you don't want to be leaning back. Right there, that's better. When he comes up out of the bottom, this way, you know, his truck is upright. And when he comes up out of the bottom, he'll shift his glutes shift back. back yeah. And then about 30 degrees where his thighs, about 30 degrees above parallel, it's called the sticking point. And what you do there, it transfers, uh, force production is still on all the legs, but a lot on the quads, but a lot on the glutes and hamstrings. So what it is, once he gets to that point, they're pretty much done. He doesn't want to come up this way. If he scoops his hips forward, it transferred the force production back to his thighs, his trunk is upright and he stands up. If you watch Olympic lifters, when they come up out of the bottom of a clean, at the bottom, their, their trunk is straight up. As they, come, as they come up, their hips come back, but then as they hit that sticking point, their hips will come forward more, and you'll see a transition from the, the first push, transition, and then the second push. And it's like twice as fast as the first one. And that's why he does that. When It's really effective when he gets real heavy. That's right. So whenever I feel myself slowing down, I push through, that's, that's, that's put the key. weight into my anterior. And that, and that is what his cue is. When that weight starts, you don't want it to stop. As it starts to slow down, you can, slow, you can start transitioning your hips through to transfer the load back to the quads. It's like doing a hack squat. But it should be subtle. I was exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, he does that in practice to exaggerate that, but when he gets to the top too much, if he exaggerates, he'll lean back at the top, and we don't want that. He just wants to stand up straight. It will cut, It will be effective as he gets heavy. There you go. Is that wet? Sit back. There you go. That's much better. Deep breath. There you go. Get that brace. Get that brace. I want to hear it. Tense up. There you go. Hips forward. There you go. So you can really see that transition from as she hits that sticking point, as she scoops through, the, the weight is, is it becomes easier and, it, and the second push on that is twice as fast. It gets you out of that sticking point. And that's been, that's been done for years. Right. One of the reasons why we go from, you know, most people just do it from the side to look to see if they're, are they, are they hitting parallel. But what you need to do, because from the side view, it may look like everything's in place. But when you start doing filming from the anterior versus posterior, you'll be able to see if there is a definite shift or compensation to one side. Or if you're leaning, like Martins was saying, his elbow drops when he comes up out of the bottom, and you'll be able to see from this view. So that's why if you're gonna analyze a squat or any movement, it has to be all the way around. You have to look at every angle, laterally, anteriorly, posteriorly, and I even like to film overhead. Because then you can really see a rotation there. You guys all want this. Actually, this actually looks pretty good. There you go. Sit back, right up, hips, there you go. Beautiful. And you can see when he was doing that scoop movement, 
at that one point, it was the second part of that lift is so much faster. Yeah. I just think when, when, you, have, when you have it, when you have, well, because you're transferring the force production. Yeah. It's pretty much done back here. The quads are still working. Now as you come through, you're in a much more uh, mechanically efficient position. So now you can, it's like when you jump, you come here, what's the first thing you want to do? You Boom. scoop through. You yeah. scoop through and then you can put more force into the ground. Awesome. So if you, if you look at it, it's more impulse. Yep. Force times time. Bigger the force and the, the more force, more time you have to produce that force, the, the faster it's going to go, it's going to create momentum. Awesome. So you're not going to miss the lift. Go, good position. Stay stable. Big breath. Boom. Hips. Keep the chest up. Arch your back more. Boom. There you go. Do it again. Do it again. Hips. Do it. Don't move. Don't, move. Don't move yet. One thing we also have to worry about too is, is the initial setup. How far is, apart his hands are. You know, where is he going to position it here on, on his uh, shoulders? You don't want to be off-centered. Everything has to be centered properly. If not, he's going to shift to one side and it could cause an injury because there's more load on the other side. And also, too, notice he only takes like one and a half steps coming out. You don't want to waste a lot of time coming out of there or waste a lot of energy. Take the weight off, step back, adjust, and go. Don't walk two or three steps back. Ooh, that was hard. That was Harder than I... Great. Harder than I wanted, so. Hey, we're looking at the upper back. It's kind of like deadlift when they go heavier, your back starts to round. Yeah. The weight's out here. As you come down to the bottom, you've got to try to keep those elbows up. And yeah. Back really arch. Yeah. You want to try to stay in that position as much yep. as possible. Because it was easier in the lightweights. Now yeah. it's getting heavier. Yeah, now really it's getting heavier because it. now these these erector muscles, you know, you're, you want to shorten them, but yeah. it, with the weight's too heavy, the elbows come down, it's going to lengthen the yeah. muscle. But it has to be strong enough in an eccentric action to hold it there so you don't yeah. drop anymore. I think with the lighter weights, my shoulders are strong enough to push my elbows exactly. up. Exactly. Then I don't have to think about my upper back so much. Now that it's heavier, my shoulders aren't gonna do anything yeah. to get my elbows up. You think about it, you're trying to push that way and it's hard to hold four or yeah. 500 pounds up that way. Exactly. Again, it just takes practice and training to hold that bar there. Okay, well let's go up to 500 and see let's what happens. Let's do it. And this is uh, 11 pounds more, 506. 506, good. Get set, get your feet in the right place, chest up, squeeze down. Boom, hip, skip, good. Do it again, chest up, drive, hips. Very good. The reason he does that, it's a lot easier after he does a heavy set like that just to drop the weight, or if he, if he can't get the weight, it's better to drop it, especially if you only have one spot. And, you know, if you have two or three spotters, they can help him up with it. But especially with the bumper plates, it's just easier to drop the weight. What, but Tom, what if you don't have a bumper place in the gym? Well, don't go so heavy. Don't go real heavy. <laughs> especially if you're gonna go that and you don't have any spotters, or you can get inside the rack and use that. Use uh, the safety use the rails, bars. Yeah. You can do you can do that. So one thing that happened with me on this set is I felt my knees caving in, my elbows dropping. I could have muscled out a few more, maybe some more reps, but uh, after hitting my shoulders, biceps, and triceps yesterday, I could feel that strain on my arms, so I decided to call it next week and we're going to come we back. Also, we also need to do this. I don't want you, your chin's tucked. My your chin's head, tucked. Your, your chin's tucked. Oh. You need to have your head straight. I was even that, a lot of people will actually raise their head a little bit through the Interesting, I didn't even notice yeah, that. Yeah, your head, you're down like this, and that can cause, you know, a lot of neck problems. Even when, because I know I was checking my feet for a second. That that's fine, but you got you got to learn not to look down. You got that, okay. you know. You got you got to be careful. Interesting. You, you got to go out and feel that proprioception, know where everything is. Uh -huh. but when you're coming up, your chin is tough. You got to keep your neck up, and that'll help gotcha. keep your chest up as well. Yeah, you know you're right. Uh, okay. okay, next week that's what I'm going to be focusing on. There you go. Drag it up your shin. There you go. Stand straight up. Get the head up. That's but come up. Yeah, I did want to yeah, put it on. Yeah, you did do that again. Interesting, okay. Now, also, too, when he's doing this, at the bottom, the bar should be centered over his dorsum. This is the dorsum here. About where your shoelaces should be. And you keep is, that too, is that fine? No, that's perfect. 
It's uh, so about an inch away from the ship. About an inch away, a lot of people will roll the bar in, sit yeah. back and then pull, but you want to keep the bar on your legs. Yeah. yeah. I tell my people, you know, with deadlift socks to drag it up. Yeah. That's why they wear powder too. Yeah. They keep the bar close because if you start drifting out, if you look at that, how far away is that from the low back? It's really far, so it's stressing. If you keep it here, all the load, you're trying to get the load on the legs. Yep. And that's what you did, you're doing fine. Perfect. That's easy, but, that's easy not but when you come off the floor, you're kind of down. So trying interesting. To keep... Again, it's one of those things that developed that I haven't paid attention to. Yeah. Nobody's ever done a critical analysis. You can look, you can have a normal uh, curve in your neck, but you just want to look down this way. You're looking okay. actually down at the floor. Yeah, because I want to really Yeah, you're to trying to do that, but when you come up, just pull your head up a little bit, okay. sit back, and drag it up your legs. You want to keep all the pressure on the entire foot. Okay, pull the bar in, sit back a little bit. Okay, bring your hand. There you go. Better? This is really heavy. Okay, you look, it looks fine. Come down, touch, and go again. Keep that bar really close. Pull the bar in. Better? Come on. Drag it up your shin. Drag it up. Push. Good. You. Hip shoulder at the same time. There you go. Good. One more. Start with your hips a little bit higher, not much. Okay. Right there. That's even better. Good. Yeah. Does that feel better? Yeah. Your hips are down a little bit low. And okay. what happens is when you pull off the floor, your your hips will come up in that right position and all of a sudden, yes. boom, everything kicks in. So why don't you just start with your hips in that position? Well, Weightlifters awesome. do it all the time. Yeah. You'll see them. They'll, they'll squat down, they start to pull, their hips will come up, and all of a sudden, boom, the bar comes off. The yeah. So just start in that optimal start position. There. Okay. Are you double overhanding this? No, no. My grip is shot today uh, from uh, my double overhand barbell this bent over rows. This is 716. 716. So I'm just going to do mixed grip. But today I'm really just seeing where what's aching, uh, if, how my positioning might be off, and trying to fix little knickknacks. If it feels good, of course I'll rep it out more, but at least three reps. There you go! Good. Yeah. One more. Hey, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. The last one looked good. I mean, both of you started with your hips down, but then it rose up, and then all of a sudden, boom, it came up. Yeah. You kept the bar close. I want you to do one more, but I want okay. you to move your feet out a little bit. Water? Wind your feet out just a little bit. Okay. I was going narrow because of the knurling, but I could. I but could if take, you go out a little bit more, I could take some scratches. Yeah. Like, you know, you just want to lift a lot of weight. So yeah. a lot of times, if you're too, if you're too close, you know, you might have some. Un, oh. You know, you might be not as balanced. Yeah. The wider you are, you're going to be more stable. Yeah. And with the hands right there too, you're, you should be fine. But I want you to see okay. if it feels any different. Just about hip width, maybe a little farther. But you know, you have to optimize your stance width and grip width. Yep. Because you don't want to go too far in, but you don't want to go too far out because you'll lean over too much. Yeah. And if you're too close, you'll be unbalanced. Got it. Let's do it. Bar close, chest up, right there. There you go, the bar's drifting, <coughs> drop. Do it again, keep the bar closer. That's much better. <coughs> Reset. There you go. <coughs> Your chin's down. And we look toward, look toward Rumbar. Ah, yeah, you're done. Yeah, I'll take it. All right. But the last one was your best one. Yeah. So get the close. This thing is stopping me. It's definitely that pain. All right. Also, too, if you do this again, use power. Okay. Because that way it'll slide up. Yeah. And you can get a couple more reps out of that. But that's why cool, if you feel any kind of pain like that, fuck it. Stop. Yeah. Don't I do need to get that checked out. I have no idea what to do. But get that checked. Yeah. Because you only got a month. Yeah. Oh, so I'm just a like bit bummed because uh, my deadlifts are going slow because that pain my upper hamstring is back. I got rid of it for the most part. So now it's uh, when I really just want to check out with a doctor what's going on in there and uh, possibly see a physical therapist. Should be okay. Just need to do uh, diligent work every day to heal that up. First, 
step, really figure out what's going on. Now I'm gonna be doing a single leg pistol exercise to uh, just keep my quads active. And then I'm gonna move on into a hamstring isolation work. I, right now, I'm doing a, a pistol uh, squat variation where I am very strictly making sure that I don't drop my hips as I squat down. It's really difficult. There's also, I'm, use, I'm using this as rehab for my beat up left knee. I can't believe people freaking love this machine. I swear by it, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's a freaking death contraption. I, I can never figure out how to get it into it in the first freaking place. This freaking thing is all on. Just like, who am I supposed to like, just suicide jump on this thing? <laughs> How, how is this functional? How does it benefit? Let's just get rid of this for a Like and subscribe, everybody. Just don't touch. Ah, I'm getting rid of this thing, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right, Dad. Millions. He made millions playing video games. Freaking video games. What am I doing and doing all this lifting stuff? It freaking hurts. My body hurts. I don't even make millions.